Hello, everybody. This is uh, Dr. Yahya Ithawi. Um, I'm a consultant neonatologist, and this is one episode of a series about neonatal ventilation. And we'll have more um, series, up to maybe 40 episodes of this, uh, to um, talk about all the aspects of ventilation. In this uh, episode, I will be talking about some tips of reading the graphics and loops. Now, since the uh, technology of ventilation has been changed and revolutionized around uh, 2010, before or after, um, the, the monitoring and the optimization of ventilation has been changed. Um, now, um, most of us monitor the uh, response to uh, ventilation by doing blood gases and monitoring the saturation. Now, however, imagine that the frequency of gas can be like every two hours. So, in a in a 24 hours, you have uh, you know 12 or um, maximum 12 numbers. However, if you look at the graphics, the sampling time up to every second, which have zillions of of, of of numbers that you can monitor your patient and make decisions. You have trends and you have you have lots of data to properly ventilate a baby so let's go and talk about these uh, uh, these tips and so the first things is I will talk about uh, uh, graphics and graphics is um, uh, comparing a, a ventilation parameter over time so you can see uh, this parameter uh, the pressure in this parameter is the flow and this parameter is the volume and it's compared versus versus time unfortunately the word time behind my picture so I will try to move it later on um, and, and, and in this graphics you can see um, the most important when you read the graphics is you have to identify your breath ties that we talked about in previous episodes so you can see here, we can see a mandatory in the first wave and the pressure. Unfortunately, the cursor is not showing. Um, I tried my best to show the curve, but it's not showing. So I don't know if you guys see or not. And however, in the first uh, slide, in the first line or in the first graph, the first breath look like, looks like um, a mandatory one. The first, second and the third looks like spontaneous and the fourth one looks like combined spontaneous and uh, uh, mandatory however it's not synchronized so when i look at the pressure i know that the mode is not providing assistance which means it's either um, SIMV or another mode with high trigger or the flow sensor is not working also, I can say that there is no synchronization. So either the baby is fighting the ventilator or we are using non-synchronized non, non monitor. When I look to the flow graph in the second line, and I consider always the flow, uh, flow uh, graph is the core and the center of the graphics. It, everything depends on it. You can see that uh, the um, flow of the first wave is very sharp rising. And that's not a uh, good thing because when you do like that, <clears throat> you can cause upper airway dryness and even cuffing. Uh, so you need to slow it a little bit down. And then you can see it goes down before it reaches to zero, before the baby can pause and have a little bit of rest between inhalation and exhalation. The exhalation starts. So this is, looks mandatory with short uh, rising time and short inspiratory time. There are two spontaneous one, okay, uh, good inflation. Uh, a little bit of inflation and good deflation going back uh, to uh, close to zero again going back close to zero not a zero i'm a hundred percent which means that the baby need a little bit of sedation or even uh, and giving him a little bit wider uh, expiratory time and you can see we have two flows the machine provided it, same problem with short inspiratory time before doing ex uh, inflation the baby start another inflation so we are fighting you can see we here we are achieving the tidal volume in the third line you can see the tidal volume in the blue color we are achieving the tidal volume in the first uh, uh, breath and also in the last one although it's not synchronized and for in the second and third one we are not achieving
Now, uh, if we look uh, at the graph, the graph also will tell us the phases of ventilation. And the uh, machine knows the phases of ventilation, either depending on the time or the pressure or the flow, how that's happened. So I say from that time to that time, you have to deliver in. From that time to that time, you have to deliver out. Uh, or I've told when the flow change, change the phase or when the volume, so it depends on, um, um, and in this graph, it looks like we're depending on the time. And so when we're comparing the pressure to the time to see the phases, you can see that the initiation, the initial phase, uh, the baby uh, tried to do, uh, to decrease the pressure inside and drop the pressure from CPAP down to zero. And because the ventilator sensed that and it's below the trigger, it starts the ventilation. And you can see the rising time is slow. So it looks like a good rising time reached the P max. And that represent the first part of the inspiratory phase. And you have to know that this first part is mainly in the airways. And then we have the plateau phase where the pressure is somewhere is okay between the airways and the alveoli. And after the plateau phase, we have the send, descending pressure back to the, uh, to the CPAP. And in that phase, uh, after the inspiratory phase or the expiratory phase, it, it's happening due to recoil of the chest wall, the diaphragm and the alveoli. So that part from the plateau down back to the PIP represent the alveoli. So when you have a graphics and you have a change in that part, then you know that there's something with the alveoli, whether it's a good or bad thing. When it, the changes happen in the first part of the inspiration, you know the problem in the airways. Now, if you look to this graph and you can see that there is a, a pressure, uh, as in, and the second is um, you know, the pressure wave, and we have three types. So you can see in the first line, we have the beautiful waves, we have a beautiful rising time, and then we have um, a short plateau, and then we have descending time. So we have an airway, good rising, and we have good decrease in the pressure back to uh, where it was, although the peep is not showing here, but we should show it. And then you can see there is pause, and then start again, pause and start again, pause and start again. They are the same shape. Are, so I know that this is a mandatory breath provided by the uh, ventilator. Now, uh, in the second one, you can see that the patient is trying to make a negative pressure at the beginning. And I know that this is a trigger. So, and mostly um, uh, the patient is a triggering and this type is assisted uh, uh, ventilation. So, uh, if I, I would guess the mode in this second line, I would say that this is a mode that can provide assistance. So, it's a, a PSV or a PTV or a SIPBV or assisted control, so some mode that can provide assistance. And uh, in the last one, I can see that uh, the, 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 it's mostly because it's a different shape and a different pattern and a different um, uh, timing. So I know this is a spontaneous. And when I see this in a graph, I know is the mode is not helping the spontaneous. So we're talking about SIMV or uh, IMV or, or CMV uh, or um, any other mode with high trigger that's not helping the baby. Uh, the graphics also, um, as we've discussed with many slides, and in the slide it tells you whether it's synchrony and there is no synchrony. So you can see in the first uh, line, in the first box, there is synchronized breath between the patient and the ventilator. You can see in the second one, the spontaneous breath that is not provided by the machine, it's only the patient effort. In the last one, you can see that there is asynchrony, and it's very clear from the first line, the pressure, because you have two peaks. And in the flow, you can have two flows. You have inspiratory flow and then inspiratory flow, which has never happened in the ventilator. And you can see the tidal volume is achieved good by the ventilator and then start by the patient. So you have, you have two tidal volumes, and you know from these graphs, um, that there is asynchrony. So the graphs are beautiful telling you whether the patient is synchronizing with the ventilator or not. And then you can judge whether you use a different mode 
or you need a sedation or you have to wean or you have to escalate or whatever the reason and it depends on the type of the patient and the disease process you are facing. The graphics also is important in showing you the trigger and the trigger is very important uh, to rest or train the, the patient depending on the face of the ventilation and whether you're weaning and and I actually I use the trigger to wean from the ventilation. I know some other people use it uh, for um, other mode like using VG and, 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 and PSV to wean or using um, I mean, a CPAP trial to wean. But also I use the, the, uh, the, the trigger to wean the patient and train the diaphragm and train the babies to breathe before I extubate. Now how the ventilator uh, trigger or how the patient trigger the ventilator to give the assistance uh, the ventilator measure the in and out if the ventilator finds as in the first picture in the blue color if the ventilator find that what's coming in is not equaling what is going out then the ventilator knows that there is some effort and will provide help and that effort the effort that is going from down is measured so and it depends on the limit that we give to the ventilator so uh, if the ventilator measure here that there is a flow of let's say according to the cutoff we insert let's say 0.2 mil uh, per uh, uh, per uh, two, um, uh, 0.2 liter per minute and then um, the ventilator will assist if we set it's 0.3 and the patient made 0.2 then the ventilator will not help because it's below the cutoff. So the me ventilator measures the flow here, and if there is a difference more than the one we set, then the ventilator will help. How the ventilator knows? It measures the difference between the in and out. You can see that there is here a difference, there are difference in the color. However, you can see in the second picture, in the black color, that there is no trigger because what's coming in is the same as going out and the ventilator will know that there is nothing and it will not measure. Here, the first picture, there is difference between what's coming in and it's coming out. And then the ventilator will measure in the other port uh, what's actually going out. If it meets or it's above the set, then the ventilator will help. How I do that? I will increase, for me, I will increase depending on the situation. I will increase the trigger slowly from 0.2 to 0.3 to 0.4 and so on. It depends on the pace. And then if I, uh, I, I increase it to, let's say, one liter per, per minute and uh, the baby is only needing four liters to, uh, then I know that the patient is doing almost 25% of the ventilation and that point he or she might be able to, um, you know, uh, tolerate extubation. Um, if we look at the trigger, the, the previous slide was about how, but if we look at the trigger, if you can see the pressure, you will see a negative, a little bit of negative uh, pressure uh, uh, taking a little bit part of the field and you know that the patient is triggering and that trigger will be measured and there will be alarm on the graph or there's a line to tell you whether the patient is exceeding the trigger or not. When you look at the flow, you'll see some kind of pend at the start of the inflow to know that there is a trigger or not. The other way of looking to the uh, baby is looking to the loops and the difference between loops and the graphics, the loops is comparing one ventilation ventilator parameter versus another ventilator parameter. There is no time here and therefore it will only tell you something about the dynamic of one cycle and not like the graphics, it will tell you the trend and it will compare uh, 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 various successive cycles and most of the ventilator can show you somewhere between three to seven uh, breath cycles at a time. So if we look here to the flow of and volume loop, it, it, it's a, of a great value. You can see that the flow of the pain of the, 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 uh, the y, the y, the x axis is the flow while the y-axis is, you can see that there is a flow here and there is volume uh, on the, uh, on the uh, transverse line and in the, uh, uh, 
uh, the uh, up line you show you the flow and you can see the uh, uh, there is inflow above the line and outflow above the line the inflow show you the inspiration and the outflow show you the expiration and look if this is graded you can see that uh, we need lots of inflow to achieve the tidal volume so you can see from zero to uh, uh, maximum tidal volume and uh, you can see there is a lots of the flow so you need high flow to achieve the tidal volume and if you have less tidal volume mean your lung is not opening and that's mean you have increased decreased compliance while if you have less flow with wider tidal volume then you know that the compliance are great also in the uh, uh, flow you can compare the amount of inflow and the amount of outflow so you can see um, here's the outflow is a little bit bigger than inflow also you can see that the tidal volume is going back to zero because if it's not going back to zero mean that there is some kind of air trapping so from this you can say whether there is obstru obstructive problem there is restrictive problem whether we have air trapping or whether we have a leak it tells you great things if you have improvement you can compare inhalation and inflation we will next i will show you more so in this one if you can look to the flow volume loop that there is kind of obstruction because you need a very uh, uh, low flow very low flow inspiration to achieve good tidal volume and you can see that we have no restricted uh, 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 problem because alveoli can achieve a good volume with very minimum flow however you can see that the uh, expiratory is scooped out it become convex and it does not reach to zero so we know that there is expiratory problem and we know that the ventilator is not going back to zero so we know that here there is air trapping and there is obstructive problem because remember when the baby breathes in and the air moves from outside to the airway inside the airway should be negative pressure and the outside is positive pressure which means that the airway will be collapsing and for airway to for the air to move from the upper airway to the lower airway the lower airway should be negative pressure and how the air lo neg lower airway become negative pressure uh, because the chest expand which means the upper airway uh, will be in the uh, uh, the lower airway will be less pressure than the upper airway and the flow however to move in the uh, other way around we know that uh, the um, lower should be higher than the upper airway and therefore the uh, upper airway shortest or smallest diameter is in the expiration so here we know that there is air trapping we don't have restrictive problem and we have uh, air trapping so but of course when we look at this we have to go back and look also to the graphics and the saturation and the baby chest movement and the gas and then we know where is the problem and we can adjust the ventilator setting accordingly and monitor the changes right away on the graphics now look at this graph you can see we have very high flow inspiration however we are not achieving tidal volume looks like the is compressed and become elongated so we have very high flow but we're not achieving the tidal volume so we know that the lung is not expanding so we know that there is a restrictive lung problem it can be rds it can be pneumonia it can be bleeding whatever the reason is and we can also know that the uh, the expiration is also need very high flow to go out we know that for example the recoil of the alveoli is not doing great so we know from this but we know that there is no air trapping because the flow is going back to zero so we know that there is a restrictive lung problem and probably here we need to increase the peep if we need to increase the peep the baby should not have spontaneous breathing 
and therefore we should change the mode if we are using for example SIMV we have to go to um, SIPPV and if we have using map of more than 12 then probably we have to go to high frequency so by looking only to the graphs you can see what you can do now from the graph you can judge what's the mode and in this you can see it's a conventional mechanical ventilation because you have only uh, the backup rate so it's either SIBBV uh, and the baby is well sedated or SIMV and the baby is well sedated or if the patient is the patient is awake uh, this is just a, a CMV this is just mandatory breath there is no uh, no um, there is no spontaneous breathing and it's not assisted also because there is no trigger so there is no assisted breath here there is no uh, spontaneous breath it's only mandatory so we either completely paralyzing the patient or the patient is in coma or this is a CMV ventilation however in this it's a different you can see that you have a mandatory breath but also you can see that you have a trigger so you have an, uh, you have a mandatory but you have assisted and you don't have spontaneous so we know this is either assisted control or SIBBV or PTV this is not SIMV and this is not a CMV because um, it's all uh, why it's assisted because see there is one the ventilator waited waited until until no the patient breath and then you get the second one so you can see that if you look at the first graph you can see that there is a little bit negative pressure with the second cycle and also you can see with the second flow second line and second breath there is a bending of the flow and we know that this patient has volume targeted ventilation too because um, you can see the tidal volume is limited uh, you can see also judge the inspiratory time whether it's enough or not we can see that the inspiratory time is very good we can see the rising time is not great because it's very sharply increasing and we can see we are pausing before and after each breath which means the inspiratory time and the expiratory time and the ratio between the two are okay now if you look at the this mode of ventilation it looks like it's a SIMV and the reason because we have mandatory and we have spontaneous so the, the patient is receiving what is set as a backup rate and also he has a spontaneous and supported so we know that there is a you know the patient is awake we know that the patient is uh, is is uh, uh, taking some breaths we know that these are not supported and it's vital to look at the so you can see the patient is triggering trying to trigger himself but the ventilator did not help and the patient did it himself you can see this is mandatory and a trigger but this is a triggered one the, you can see the first breath is mandatory the second two breaths is spontaneous and unsupported although patient trying to trigger the third breath you can see that there is a uh, patient is triggering so the first one is uh, mandatory the last one is assisted and the middle two ones are uh, actually spontaneous not help and it's very clear the first and second one from the volume graph it's a volume control vent uh, ventilation and, and because it's 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 not goes above the, a certain level so um, again the flow is very beautiful to uh, also uh, the flow uh, it, it comes helps you to see if there is a leak and also it helps you to um, judge if there is a fluid and you need to do suction or not or there is obstruction it's all can you see from the graphics now uh, if you look at this this graph you can also judge uh, uh, whether there is a, a pressure limit ventilation although volume target ventilation uh, and um, you can see uh, here there is two lines there is the pressure limit and the patient achievement and you can see the ventilator gives low pressure first low tidal volume the second one being giving above the limit until the ventilator understand in the third breath that this is the breath suitable for the patient because you are the first one was below the tidal volume the second one above the tidal volume and the first one was appropriate tidal volume however if you look at the pressure in the second one although was the tidal volume is high 
but the pressure was planted. So we know this ventilation is SIMV, pressure limited, but also volume targeted. Now, all th this ventilator, you can see it's a pressure support ventilation. And the reason for that, you can see that in the second line, the uh, inspiratory time is variable. So there is wide, there is different inspiratory time between breaths. So we know that the baby or the patient is controlling the ventilation from inspiratory time. Because he, he, he or she does that, then we know that this is probably pressure support ventilation because the patient is guiding the ventilator from the pressure, uh, from the uh, IT. Uh, we know that there is a target pressure or a pressure uh, target and we don't know, we can we know. So this is PSV or the pressure limited and volume targeted and it's a, a, a pressure support ventilation. Uh, from the also from the graphics we can see the type of the waves so you can see the first one is triangular there's slow rise of the pressure reaching the top and then goes down so we know this is uh, probably a volume targeted ventilation because it's a the second one you can see it's a sudden rise then stay on the line and then sudden drop. So we can know that this is pressure limited. In the third one, it's a sinusoidal. So we know that it's probably hybrid type of ventilation. It's also telling us uh, what, how much inspiration and how much expiration. So we can see that the probably the inspiration in the second wave is um, probably is 60% um, uh, to 70% of the breath cycle. And also, it tells us the area under the curve. The colored area is the map, because map depend on the PIP, on the PIP, and therefore on the I time, and on the rate, and it's all included to calculate the map. And the map is important in judging uh, how much uh, uh, ventilation the baby need and the decision to go to, to high frequency or not. If you look at the graphics of the flow, also you can see there is different type of waves. So you can see you have uh, descending ramps because sharp rise and then goes down. So probably this is needed when you have um, probably narrow airways. And, but remember, this can cause dry um, airways and it, 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 it need, maybe need a little bit of, uh, of, of, of sedation. You can see the second one is um, sudden rise, but the baby stay somewhere. So this one is a good to achieve the tidal volume. So this one is good. Not this is probably not uh, uh, not achieving a good tidal volume. This one is the second one is achieving the tidal volume. You can see um, the other one is exponential decay. So there is sharp rise and there is slow sudden decrease, and then the decrease. Uh, decline a little bit. So you can look at the first one, uh, there is a, um, um, a constant decrease in the flow. The second one is sharp increase, stay and then sharp decrease. The third one is sharp increase, sharp decrease, and then at around seven or maybe 50% of the flow, there is a slow of the decrease. There is sinusoidal pattern. So um, this is have a very good uh, rising time and also good inspiratory time and slow decreasing time. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, give you indication about proper rising time and, and probably the baby is contributing to the ventilation. The third one in the flow is ascending round. So you can see slow rise, but sudden drop. So each one, depending on the situation and looking to the flow, to the volume, anti-dull volume, and looking to the loop, it can tell you exactly what you are dealing uh, regarding the uh, ventilation. If you look at the uh, uh, graphics from volume point of view, you can see um, in this, it's probably um, hybrid. In the second one, you probably are hybrid, you are using joint type of ventilation um, in, in, but the first one you can see it's ascending ground so the tidal volume is being built slowly 
and then probably you're using very uh, low flow and then uh, all of a sudden the flow on the inspiratory time are very short so it goes down so it's called ascending ramp in the second one probably you are giving very um, uh, higher flow and that's why you're achieving this shape and you're probably uh, using um, adjunct type of ventilation the important uh, also to talk about uh, loops and uh, what is the best uh, peep when you're dealing with the uh, ventilator uh, I know some people has uh, peepophobia, uh, but I'm a person is a peepophilic. Uh, and the reason for that, uh, I think uh, there is no normal peep. Certain patient can have peep of five, other need peep of 15. There is no risk of pneumothorax from using a proper dynamic peep. How you decide, you look at the loops. So you look here, uh, I consider the, uh, the um, X, um, line, y, uh, X and Y line meeting is uh, where the PIP starts. So here is not showing the peak. And you can see from the zero point when the inspiratory start to slow, we are giving more pressure, more pressure until we reach to the cursor. Uh, we're giving very high pressure but we're not achieving volume all of a sudden we have a magic point where very short or very minimum increase of pressure give you great volume and that's what we call it the opening pressure we reach to the point in the first graph and then the pressure start to decrease however the volume start in continue plateau all of a sudden, close to the curve in the expiration, uh, there is minimum change in pressure, but the volume goes back to zero. And that's called closing point. And the safe ventilation should be between closing and the opening point. We should avoid to go below the opening point we should also avoid the uh, hyperexpansion. And how do you know the hyperexpansion? You reach to the point where you're increasing the pressure, but you're not getting volume. So you can see at this point, the circular one, more pressure is giving, but the pressure state, uh, the volume stays the same. So you need to avoid this area in the circle, and also you need to avoid the area in the beginning. So if you have increasing compliance you get better volume with less pressure when you decrease compliance your cursor move in the right side direction uh, because you are giving uh, less pressure but you're getting better volume now so to explain that we look at this graph. So we are starting here uh, from the uh, PIP, which is after the uh, meeting of XY line. And you can see the pressure moved a little bit, moved a little bit, until it reached to a point where there is sudden increase in the volume with minimal change in the pressure. And then when we do expiration, you can see that the curve move uh, with decreasing pressure, but the volume are almost same, almost same. Until we reach a point, the volume dramatically decrease. So you can see that there is a critical opening pressure, LIP. And there is a critical closing pressure, UIP. And you can see uh, at certain point after the dotted line, there is increase in the pressure, but we're not achieving volume. That area you need to avoid. And you can see 
at the certain point in expiration after the dotted line where is a minimal change in the pressure giving you a huge loss of volume so you need to avoid that and therefore your safest ventilation is between these two lines you can see these two lines the dotted lines is where you need the ventilation and therefore the uh, point from moving from PEEP to the opening pressure should always be less than 50% of the PEEP. So let's say if your PEEP is 7 and your opening pressure is 13, then from 7 to 13, we're talking about 6. And 6 uh, divided by 7 is around 90%. So this is very low PEEP. So you need to increase the PEEP to, for example, 8 and 9. So if your PEEP is 9 and your opening pressure is still 13, then we're talking about opening pressure of 3 cm water or 4. And 4 divided by 9 is less than 50%. So that is very good PEEP for that particular patient. I'm going to repeat that. The opening pressure, which is the PIP start from PEEP until the sudden point of a critical opening appear. This should be at least less than 50% of the PEEP. So if you have a PEEP of 6, the opening pressure should be not more than 9. If your PEEP is 10, then the opening pressure should be not more than uh, uh, 15 and so on. So always look to the opening pressure. How much PIP you need to reach a magic point where minimum pressure change gives you a great volume change. And by doing that, the closing pressure will also decrease. So the magic point where minimal decrease in the pressure leading you to loss of volume will also decrease. So in that area before the dotted line, which we call it the atelectatic area, and the area after the, dot, the second dotted line, we call it the over distension area, need to be avoided. So this red color, the peaking area, and the area below the opening and closing pressure, the red area, is called unsafe zone. So these are, the here's the zone of under recruitment, a zone of injury and the zone of over uh, distension zone of injury. So where you want your breathing to be safe window. How you know that? The pressure from starting PEEP at the red color to the opening pressure should be not more than 50% of PEEP. So if your opening pressure is 14, your PEEP need to be at least nine. If your opening pressure is uh, 11, your PEEP should be not less than uh, probably 7, and so on. And by that, you know where is how you select your best PEEP. If you have more questions about this, you can post a question and I can explain it more. So you can see this is the PEEP, and this is the PEEP before the opening alveoli, and you can see this is very bad. So you can see that the PIP is almost double the PIP. The PIP of opening pressure is almost there. This is very bad ventilation. If you cannot achieve, then probably you need high frequency. So imagine the red color PIP, the dangerous PIP, should be 50% of the PIP. And this one, the blue color safe PIP, should be most of the PIP. And to achieve that, you need to increase your PEEP. So your PEEP in this patient need to be at least double. And also you need to avoid the black color PIP, the unsafe PIP, because that causes over distension. So you can see the red PIP and the, the black PIP is unsafe. You need to expand your safe PIP. And to achieve that, you need to decrease your PIP probably, change the setting, change the mode, and increase your PIP. 
And to increase the PIB, you need to do it slowly and monitor your loops. Again, um, another repetition of the uh, best PIB is the PIB that avoid the alveolar recruitment. So the alveoli is always recruited and it need to be at least 50% of the PIB. You need to achieve the optimal uh, compliance PIP or the safe PIP where it's above the opening pressure but below the distension pressure. So you can have avoid alveolar over distension, avoid alveolar under distension and having a safe breathing. So always remember to avoid peaking and to make the opening pressure at least 50% of the PIP of the peak, you know, the opening pressure should be at least below 50% of the peak. Again, we're repeating that. So we can see here the um, high PIP that causes over distension is lost. And you can see that the PIP is increased and the alveolar uh, distension or recruiting PIP is decreased. So the opening pressure is now below the PIP. So this is a better ventilation. This patient is more comfortable. This ventilation is more safe because from the starting of PEP to the opening pressure is at least about 50% of the PEP. And the PEP is being decreased to avoid over distension. So we get lost of the black unsafe PEP of over distension. And we've decreased the uh, opening pressure. And therefore we're doing safe ventilation. So again, the more you move the pressure, you're increasing the pressure to the right, without getting enough volume, you are doing over distension. To do that, you need to decrease your PIP and increase your P. And the reason because you, will, you can see the opening pressure of the PIP from zero starting, which is above the P, to the, start, to the magic opening, on the first uh, loop of the ventilation is almost like 30 percent that is perfect ventilation so but with time the doctors start to increase the pip until we reach to a point of over distension where we have more pip but we're not achieving any tidal volume but if you look at the first one with in increase in the pip centimeter of pip we're getting better volume. We've reached to a point where we're not getting any more volume. So you can see the pressure uh, of the first one and the second one and third loops achieving the same volume. So we're not doing anything other than causing distension damage. How we do that? We need to decrease the PIP and we need to increase the PIP to bring back the opening pressure back to the normal and avoid over distension. The other point that the graphics will show you is the AE ratio. The AE ratio is vital and very important for comfort of the patient, for avoidance of air trapping, and for decreasing the sedation. So if you look at the uh, first one, where the ratio is one to one, you'll see that the patient having a rising time, staying, and then decreasing the flow and then have a pause and then the pause start so for me the inspiratory time here is very good the problem is the expiratory time is short because the second inspiratory time starts before the inflation deflation goes back to zero and therefore you will have some air trapping here and therefore, the patient will start the second breath before he finishes the last one. So imagine you are trying to do, and then all of a sudden I blow inside you. To correct that, what the doctor did is increasing the, in the second breath, increasing the expiratory time. And you can see the expiratory time went back to normal before the third breath take off.
So we have a perfect inspiratory time and perfect expiratory time. And you can see that the expiratory time is here is three times the inspiratory time. Remember that you have also the rate you need to play with. So if you have inspiratory time, you have the expiratory time, you have the ratio in between them, and also you have the rising time. So if you have a lot of dryness and the patient is not comfortable, think of your rising time. There is no normal numbers, but you look at the graph. So I can see the rising time is a little bit uh, low. So I would increase in this patient also the rising time. I would increase it to 0.02 or 0.03. But if the inspiratory time becomes short, I might need to give a little bit longer inspiratory time to accommodate this. Now, what we call it inverse ratio, we don't use it very frequently. But sometimes you need to do so. So your inspiration is uh, bigger than the expiratory time. And that, when you need that, when you have a, a restrictive lung problem, I don't advise it, but sometimes it's needed. So when you have no obstructive problem, and, but you have a restricted problem. So this is not advised, for example, in a patient with a chronic lung disease, but it can be used in patient with RDS not responding to, uh, to, um, to uh, surfactant. Or if you have, uh, uh, for example, uh, pulmonary hypoplasia, and you don't need to increase the pressure because risk of pneumothorax, so then probably you need to prolong your inspiratory time to give the baby more time to ventilate. So you can see in this graph that the first one, the inspiration, is less than the expiration, it's one to two. While in the third one, there is three, the three times the inspiratory time bigger than the expiratory time. Um, by this, I end the, uh, these tips on graphics and ventilation. It's very hard to present it in one session because it's a complicated. But I'm going to also post some questions to give you more tips uh, and real scenarios to give you more tips uh, about graphics and loops. Uh, but if you have any question, if you have any specific area, please post it here and I will answer it uh, when I have time. Thank you very much. I hope to join you for the, join me for the next video. I am Yahya Ithawi.